Back in the 1980s, the actor Michael Douglas won an Academy Award for Best Actor uh, in the movie called Wall Street. And in this movie, he gives a speech in which he says, Greed, my friends, for lack of a better word, greed is good. And some businessmen really believe that in a world of uncontrolled capitalism, Greed and self-interest, they believe, really is good not only for them, but all of society. But I want to share that greed is not good. Greed brings destruction and hardship for those who have it and for those around them. First Kings chapter 2 verses 13 through 25 Now Adonijah the son of Haggith went to Bathsheba Solomon's mother Bathsheba asked him Do you come peacefully He answered Yes peacefully Then he added I have something to say to you You may say it she replied As you know he said the kingdom was mine. All Israel looked to me as their king. But things changed, and the kingdom has gone to my brother, for it has come to him from the Lord. Now I have one request to make of you. Do not refuse me. You may make it, she said. So he continued. Please ask King Solomon, he will not refuse you, to give me Abishag, the Shunammite, as my wife. Very well, Bathsheba replied. I will speak to the king for you. When Bathsheba went to King Solomon to speak to him for Adonijah, the king stood up to meet her, bowed down to her, and sat down on his throne. He had a throne brought for the king's mother, and she sat down at his right hand. I have one small request to make of you, she said. Do not refuse me. The king replied, Make it, my mother, I will not refuse you. So she said, Let Abishag the Shunammite be given in marriage to your brother Adonijah. King Solomon answered his mother, Why do you request Abishag the Shunammite for Adonijah? You might as well request the kingdom for him. After all, he is my older brother. Yes, for him, and for Abiathar the priest, and Joab son of Zeruiah. Then King Solomon swore by the Lord, May God deal with me, be it ever so severely, if Adonijah does not pay with his life for this request. And now, as surely as the Lord lives, he who has established me securely on the throne of my father David and has founded a dynasty for me as he promised, Adonijah shall be put to death today. So King Solomon gave orders to Benaiah son of Jehoiada and he struck down Adonijah and he died. There's a lot going on in today's scripture reading and uh, I want to read from page 134 in the Living Life Devotional which explains the passage a little bit better. In today's passage, Adonijah continues his schemes to become king but after his failed attempt, this time he tries to take a more underhanded roundabout approach. Adonijah approaches Bathsheba, Solomon's mother, and asks her to make a request to King Solomon on his behalf to grant Abishag the Shunammite as his wife. To us, 
Adonijah's request may seem inconsequential, but according to Eastern customs, it could be understood that Adonijah is trying to position himself to take the throne from Solomon as Abishag was King David's last female consort and therefore closely associated with David in people's minds. Solomon knows from Adonijah's request to marry Abishag that he will never be secure on his throne while Adonijah lives. Thus he orders Adonijah's execution. This man, Adonijah, was plotting and scheming for the throne to be the king. He had this huge desire and greed for power and prestige and influence. And this greed took over his life even when Solomon was clearly crowned the king. And he could have disappeared and he had his life spared for the moment. He couldn't rest. He comes up with this scheming and conniving plan to steal the throne. And unfortunately for him, his greed caught up with him. And people knew what was going on. And uh, he didn't pass the smell test. When something doesn't smell right, something is not right. And they smelled a rat. And he was caught and he was executed. Uh, also in the Living Life Devotional, I want to read one more thing. God has already registered our names in the Lamb's Book of Life so we can be free from the pressures to seek positions of power or build names for ourselves. We can now live for the hallowing of only one name, the name of Jesus. I really like that word from the devotional because if we have salvation and if we are people who worship Jesus Christ and promote His name and exalt His name, it means at the end of the day we don't have to promote our own names and exalt our own names because we are exalting Christ. I have to be honest, uh, when I turned 40, I had a, a, a slight midlife crisis. Uh, I didn't get a motorcycle or a sports car. In fact, I got rid of my motorcycle and sports car. Uh, but I had this extra pressure and stress in life. Suddenly, things that didn't stress me out before gave me stress now. And behind it all was inside I had this worry and fear that I wouldn't be as successful as I thought that I could be at this age. And I wonder what the limits are uh, to how far I can go. And that's a very selfish way of thinking, but many people, and I struggle with it too, uh, we want to make a name for ourselves. We want to uh, establish some sort of level of success and prestige but you know what at the end of the day our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life we have salvation in Christ and our job is to exalt the name of Christ and not to exalt our own names you know Jesus taught us that when you go to a banquet you should not take the seat of honor because that could cause an embarrassing situation. If a more important guest comes, it'll embarrass everybody. If the host needs to tell you to move to a less worthy seat. Jesus said, take the lowly seat and then the host might come up to you and say, friend, please move up to the higher seat. And then Jesus continued, those who exalt themselves will be lowered and those who humble themselves will be lifted up. You know, I was thinking of those cartoons where these cartoon characters, when they're about to eat that juicy steak, their eyes become huge. And there's a term, when your eyes become too big for your stomach. And I have that problem. Uh, I, I believe in the 20-minute window that it takes 20 minutes for your stomach to tell your brain that you're full. 
So be, in that 20 minutes, you can eat as much as you want to, as much as you can. And I have that problem. My eyes are too big. I want to keep eating and eating and eating. And that kind of appetite becomes greed. Not only with food, do you really, do you and I really need to eat the best food every day? Do you and I really need the best coffee and drinks every day? Do, do we really need that better car, the newer car? Do we really need the bigger house? Do we really need the renovated modern kitchen and bathroom? Do we really need that expensive water purifier in our house? that every Korean family is getting and costs so much money to install and pay for monthly. Oh, excuse me for sharing too much. But do we really need all these creature comforts and luxury items? Are our, are our eyes too big for our stomach? And might it be possible that we are struggling with greed on whatever level or scale? And it's a warning that greed is not good. In fact, greed, whether it's a big deal or even in the little things, causes harm and destruction. And we need to learn that we, in this world, should have contentment in Christ. I hope that God will help us to overcome our greed and show us a godly contentment. Give us this day our daily bread. Uh, God will provide all of our needs, but not all of our greeds. Let's pray together. Lord, help us. Some of us, uh, like Adonijah, have these ungodly aspirations, uh, these greeds that cause us to be sneaky and conniving and uh, cause us to bend the rules. Help us, Lord to surrender our impure desires, our greeds, and to follow the right path and to have contentment in you and to take the humble seat so that we may be lifted up. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.